most important thing to say is that um, we've actually, you know, to look at the issue at this time is important. In other words, it's a changing issue. And I think all the way through our look at technology adoption, we've seen that things have evolved. And of course, the essence of what Jane said, and we have recognized in a number of other pieces of work we've done with, um, with Be The Business, is that significant things have happened over the last year and a half. You know, the snowball that was struggling to move has really started to move now. And we recognize that that change is something that pretty much every business has been hit with. So it's a change that maybe wasn't something that was being planned, but something that definitely uh, is in process now. But I think it's important to recognize, as you say, from the report, that actually some of the fundamentals of the things we talked about um, in this area are still uh, very much apparent, which is that there's still a lack of conviction from some leaders about the value they can get from technology adoption. And you know, this is something we saw very early on in, in, in the work we did, which is that people probably didn't quite understand the impact that good technology could have. Now, we know that's moved, as I've just said. And I think, again, it's worth us recognizing that in this time when we've taken another snapshot and some really, really insightful work here that allows us to say that you know, we really need to stress and the industry, the technology industry, if I look at it from that lens, needs to step up here and represent business value in a much greater way, particularly for smaller businesses. You know, when you have a larger business, and we saw some of this from the report as well, the people who said they had an IT department, the people who said they had support could manage some of that boundary between tech technology and business. But some of these leaders, who are the ones we were talking to predominantly here, who maybe didn't always have that support because their organization wasn't of sufficient size, struggle sometimes to recognize the, the, uh, the benefit from technology adoption that may be you know, balanced against the disruption and the cost it might have. So very interesting to see that emerging again and has not to really have made that case as well as we hope we could. So I think there's definitely some work that needs to be done um, for the technology industry. It needs to do a better job, frankly, of stepping up to the business case and the accessibility requirements that there are. And much of the work we're trying to do in Be The Business at the moment is trying to say, how can we look at providing capability um, which is more suited to the, the SME audience than it might have previously been because of course much of technology and certainly from, from major technology companies is not really suited to small businesses in a direct way. It's something that can be used by small businesses but it's typically built for bigger business. So I think that came through loud and clear as well. I think the other message that was important was that um, this kind of balance between confidence and, and Jane's um, uh, narrative suggesting that maybe some of that confidence might have been misplaced or misunderstood and I think that's very reasonable again for a business leader who's very confident about the business they have maybe some of the way they've adopted technology during COVID things like Zoom or Teams or WebEx or whatever which they've managed to use assuming maybe that technology in general will have that kind of characteristic to it and we saw this very early on that you know that most businesses felt they were more productive or as productive um, as their peers. And of course, the number was significantly lower than that, lower than that when you look to the data. So maybe some of the confidence is a little misplaced at the moment, but that's good. It's good that there's the momentum there and people wanting to make a change. And I think really the industry um, with the wraparound that, uh, that we can provide in this environment needs to step up to that. And of course, we've seen with the government's Help to Grow program, there's again a sort of sense that um, the government want to assist with this, but we feel in Be The Business, there's a lot more that needs to be wrapped around that. So I think it's an important perspective. I think this is a great piece of work, which has some really, really interesting insights. And again, I think that the biggest call out for me is the industry continues to need to step up. And with Be The Business Help, I think we can start to shape that to something which which can really make a difference over the next months and years. Thank you, thank you, Phil. Um, by the way, I just want to compliment you on your your the entrance way to your your home. I presume you're working yes, from home today. Yes, very, exactly. very grand, very grand. I'm in the east wing today. Yeah. Okay, okay, very very <laughs> nice, very nice. Um, so I mean, just you know, some really interesting thoughts there, uh, Phil. And and I suppose you know the thing that you know I keep coming back to is this notion of confidence. And, you know, on one hand, you know, we could say, you know, overconfidence is a bad thing because you can 
rush into uh, rush into things maybe it partly accounts to you know that lack of success of you know so many tech adoptions that smaller businesses uh, adopt but surely it's a good thing you know surely confidence is the foundation on which you can build lots of other stuff it you know it feels like a a, a positive thing i don't i don't know phil what, what are your thoughts yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right, Anthony. I think the fact that people feel the confidence and the momentum is a great thing. And I think what we really need to do is to make sure that we have the sufficient support around it to make that confidence uh, be realised. Because previously, the issue was 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 a lack of confidence, you know, people really feeling that they didn't want to put their business online, didn't want to necessarily trade in a particular way, didn't want to do deliveries or whatever it might be. Clearly, that's all been pushed to one side now. And that confidence, oh, we can do things with technology, is great. And I think your point is exactly right. That If we've got that confidence, what we need now is the right support structure, whether that be in learning, as Jane described, you know, module-sized, digestible learning, or whether it be in simplified technology adoption, that's exactly where we need to be right now. So I think we're at a really, really critical time, and this report really illustrates that, which is confidence is up. Let's make make sure we get the parts behind it to make it successful. Thanks, Paul. Jane, Jane, what are your thoughts? You know, from, a, from an open university point of view, surely is a student coming to you or a, a business leader coming to you with, you know, a, a good grounding of confidence, that's, that's got to be a good starting point. It absolutely has. What a great foundation. And, um, you know, I think if we think about that pace of change, um, you know, and, and the fact that change is only going to accelerate, I think one of the probably the best thing that all of us can do is really have that mindset to be confident about the fact that, you know, we recognize that things won't stay the same, but we've got the confidence to be able to invest in investing ourselves. And we know where to go for that, for that training or for that advice and just jump in and really maximize, um, you know, the opportunities that we're going to have. Um, as we move through, you know, this decade, whether that's learning or whether that's adopting technology, I think confidence really sits at the foundation of all of that. And, it, and it's probably a combination of the two. You know, you've got to have, you know, you've got to have the adoption, you've got to have the learning in order to drive the tech adoption that then drives drives the learning and so on and so forth. Yeah. I, I suppose that kind of leads me to sort of my um, my next question, which is, I think there's something quite curious in in the in the research because it says there's high levels of awareness of the digital tools available, um, but there's a lack of deep knowledge and a relatively limited appreciation of the value technology can bring. So, so is that, that seems, you know, sort of almost contradictory, you know, businesses recognize that, you know, there's lots of digital tools out there, but they don't quite understand, you know, the full potential of them. And I, I think that's probably really important as we sort of, enter an age of um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. I don't know, what, what are you, what's your, your take on that, Jane? Yeah, um, I, I suppose my take on that is that whilst, you know, there is now this broad realisation that, that some of these technologies are in existence, it seems like there's quite a bit of work to do to really help individual businesses understand what that might mean for them. So, what value might that bring to them? Um, maybe that's not immediate, immediately apparent. Um, how does that fit you know, with, with their strategies, the, the opportunities they have in front of them, perhaps some of the challenges that, that they're trying to combat? So it's about how we, how we tackle that, I think. Um, and certainly skills, skills is, is part of that, but I think you know, really great, really great consultancy and advice um, also. Great, thanks, Jane. And just before I come to you, Phil, you know, again, really interested, you know, thoughts from from our audience, and particularly, you know, I'm really interested to hear people's own experiences of, you know, do they recognise that that feature that that businesses sort of understand, you know, the digital tools, but maybe don't understand the full capability and impact that those tools can bring their organisation. So, any thoughts on that? Please drop that into into the chat. Phil, Phil, what's your take on this? Is it, is it, uh, you know, are yeah. they opposite things, or, or are they, you know, is it just a, you know, process of absorption that we need to get to? Yeah, I think there is a bit of the, the, the fact that it is a bit of a process of absorption, but I think, you know, one cannot um, 
do anything but recognize that there's a huge amount of digital technology around there. But of course, it's the, the point being, as you rightly identified, is that people may be not feeling it's applicable to them. And as you know, Anthony, one of the watch phrases that you and the team have talked about for some time is, you know, small businesses looking for businesses, people like me doing things like I do. And I think we recognize and, and um, although it doesn't come out as strong in this report, but we have seen in previous reports that, that actually people want to recognize something where they can see it applying to their business. So if you're a hospitality business, you want to see what does this technology do for a hospitality business or if you're a manufacturer or whatever, it's easy to look at, you know, the big banks or even the big retailers and see them really exploiting technology in an amazing way. But really, does that work for me? And you know, we, we found very early on in some of the work we did that essentially there was three sort of components that people felt in small business. One was, I'm not quite sure I understand fully what digitization means to me. Secondly, I'm a bit scared of it, you know, because I hear about all these kind of problems, your confidence thing again, I hear about people getting hacked. But actually the thing, the third thing was, and I don't really feel I have the skills to attack it anyway. Now we're moving that forward as we've seen in the report. You know, some people feel they have some of the skills and some of the capability, but I think underpinning still this issue of, is this really good for my business and for what I do every day? Or is this just something that other businesses do? So a great awareness of the tools, but maybe not the applicability to them. Thanks, Phil. And um, Matt, I, I really like your um, question in the chat. And I just uh, messaged you to, to ask whether you'd um, be happy to just kind of ask that rather than me read it out. Can, can I maybe ask you to come off mute and, and ask this? Because I think it's a really, really important um, question that you pose here about managing good people in, in organizations and the challenge challenge of doing this practically no i'm not sure whether matt's able to come off mute um so i will ask the question of the oh matt's there so he said sure so matt can you come off mute if possible No, we can't, we can't hear you, Matt. So I'm just going to go um, and just ask the question straight off. So uh, to the panelists, the, so Matt says, you know, there's a fear that, you know, pushing tech too far could, could mean that, you know, really good employees are sort of um, isolated and, you know, there's a risk that, you know, that you essentially alienate them and, and you, lose, you lose really good people from, from your organisation by adopting tech essentially too quickly. Um, and, you know, the, the question is, you know, has the, you know, is there any recognition of this amongst the panelists around, you know, the pace of change and, and helping, you know, you, your whole team to follow you in this, in this tech adoption? Phil, maybe your thoughts. Oh, Phil, you're on, on mute. I'm trying hard, it just wasn't working. Um, the uh, yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. And it's something that, of course, every business has to deal with, which is how do you bring an organization along with you, whether it's tech adoption or new ways of working with customers or, you know, or, or even just, um, you know, kind of general approach of, of marketing or, or representing a business. But in technology, it's really important because we've seen quite a lot of issues. And, and Anthony, you mentioned earlier, a high failure rate that people perceived in implementing technology. And often that failure is because the leader or someone in the business puts something in, but they don't bring the order organization with them oh you know we don't really want to use that new system it's a bit hard I'd rather carry on doing it the old way you know that sort of attitude very hard to, to deal with and really requires the other you know balance of here which is the leadership side of things because I think if you don't get that right then not only do you have a failed um, potentially a failed uh, adoption of technology but you probably switch people off for the next iteration of it as well where they go yeah i know we tried that before and it didn't work now i'm over characterizing it there because it's never quite as black and white as that but it's so important and i think the the point is well made matt and i think with something we recognize from um if you read the the other paper which um i guess we could post people to as well which is the uk's technology moment that be the business published and within that, it talked about this exact issue, which is one of the key things you need to do is to help leaders 
with their ability to bring their teams on board with them, which again is about simplification of the technology, better communication, making it applicable to them. So really, really important issue and not to be underestimated. And I think if you get it wrong, it can be uh, pretty catastrophic for a business. Thanks, Bill. And Matt, I think, I think you're now in a bit, just, I can just see on the chat that you're now in a position uh, to speak now. I think you were in a, in a crowded space before. I, I sure, yeah. try can you hear me okay? a second time. Loud and clear. Um, so, so is this is this your experience in, in your own organisation of, of this it, being one of the challenges? It certainly is. Look, it, it's it's just a, a consequence of being so optimistic about having to, having the tech adoption in the business as an initial enthusiasm. You know, everybody can get caught up in it, and we have noticed that there were some people who were usually quiet in the business over the last 12 months and they may be hiding something quite simple like um they don't really know how to use excel and they've got this far you know and now they, they don't really want to say anything and otherwise they're excellent you know uh, employees mm -hmm. and, and and i think there's a fear amongst just a certain you know age unrelated section of of, of our company and i'm sure many others where they're thinking, oh, blimey, maybe maybe this place isn't for me after all. It, everything's changing so quickly. And we've just become conscious of that, or rather I have, really. And I'm just wondering if anybody else has found that and whether there's some thought on some maybe some top-level communication on that. You know, there's, there's lots of offers of, of skills development from government and local universities and colleges and things. But I think sometimes it's probably worth just starting that conversation by saying, don't worry. It's, it's not as complicated as it seems. And I think often once people get over the first step, that things things become a bit uh, easier. It's just the fact that we've all transformed in three months, in three years, you know, that it's a great phrase to use when you're talking to other business leaders, but sometimes when you're talking to your own people, it can be a bit scary. It's, Matt, it's a bit, can I just make a point that I, I mean, it's a really, really important point because I think that sense of not being embarrassed about you know, the fact that you don't know everything. Because, of course, you know, as you say, you've got three years worth of change happen quickly and suddenly people go, okay, I can use this Zoom thing, but actually I'm not quite sure how that other bit actually works, but I, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself for this. So there's something about a culture inside organisations, which is why it comes to the leadership part, again, of, you know, can we share this? I mean, I had a great example a few years ago, many years ago, um, we, we ran a big uh, process for senior people in businesses, CEOs and, and chairmen and so on. And it was the first time I'd ever seen the use of those smart boards, which are more common now, you know, where you can touch and draw on them and so on. And you can see all these people all the way through the day looking at this. And they had the lunch break. There was a bunch of the CEOs, when people were having the lunch, were nipping up and sort of slowly just quickly nudging this board <laughs> to see how it works. And it was a great example of saying they didn't really want to put their hand up in public and say, I don't know how that works. But if you could somehow provide the environment for let people to maybe have a play, you know, maybe do, we used to do things like lunch and learn sessions. And, you know, we used to do, I mean, not a great name, but, you know, dummies guide, any questions up, just ask any question, don't care what it is. We'll just give you an example. You know, those kind of breaking yeah. down the cultural barriers, because it's so hard, you agree? And the numeracy is like this as well. The National Numeracy Campaign had this as well. If people suddenly found they got to level in their business, say, I'm not actually very good at maths, you know. Could I maybe just get a bit of help or something? It's that same kind of thinking, isn't it? So, I think it was slightly more, just to, uh, I'll, I'll leave it after this, but I think a slightly more problematic situation is when the managers are pushing the, the leaders um, you know, and it might be a leader's fear of, of change when the managers are just yep, screaming out yep. for it. And I'll I'll leave you to judge whether that's the situation in cars pasties or not. Um, but it, you know, it's <laughs> it, it, it's going to be a problem either way, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, and I, and I do, I do think you know. I just want to say, Matt. I know that you have. You know, I know the last last fifteen months has has been unbelievably tough for you. As as you know, I'm sure. You know, as I'm, I I know it's Everybody. been for you know lots of other businesses, but. I just want to kind of commend you on, you know, the, the amazing work that you've done to kind of pivot the organisation through, you know, using you know, technology and management skill, development and management skills across your organisation. So, and, and thank you. Really appreciate the question. Yes, well, also, you know, congratulations on, on everything you've achieved over the last 15 oh, months. Okay. I think it's extraordinary. Cheers. Um, I, I mean, I, sort of, I, I, you know, Matt's kind of question kind of prompts me to think of an, another part of, of the report. 
which where, where I think there's also kind of a bit of a, a bit of a paradox in the, in the responses. So there's a um, there's a bit in the report that says that fewer than a fifth of business leaders think their employees have the technical skills necessary for the successful adoption of technology. But when asked what they plan to do about that gap, only only half have a plan to address it in the next 12 months. I mean, Jane, is this, do you see this, you know, in, in you know, the cohorts of businesses that, that you come through, is, it, is this typical? Or do you think this is something this, that's unique to small businesses? And, and how can we help business leaders kind of address some of these challenges, really kind of get to the heart of, of the problem and the challenges that Matt, Matt just um, described? Yeah, so certainly, um, you know, given the fact that we know that we have a digital skills gap in this country, so, you know, demand for those technical digital skills are, are outstripping um, the supply. And, and as that pace of change accelerates, um, we need, so it doesn't surprise me that um, businesses are reporting that they have deficits and shortages um, in terms of those skill sets and in terms then of their, their, their ability to, to implement and adopt tech. Um, in terms of um, the plan to um, address that, I think um, what we really need to get to the heart of is, is what those barriers might be. So is it time? Um, is it cost? Is it an inability to recruit um, local talent? um because they're competing perhaps you know with and, and fishing in a in an ever dwindling um pool so it's, it's thinking about well what are those what are those what are those barriers and adjusting those and and perhaps knowing where to go again for, for support to be able to start to tackle some of those things and i think um you know w one of the things that's become very apparent to us is that all businesses really do need to take more of a longer term view to, to their talent acquisition and development strategies. So um, it's not about just buying in skills at the point you need them. It is about growing your own. It's about developing your people. It's about taking those opportunities to upskill and reskill staff. And it's about there being um, a really wide range of different options available so that there's something that suits you. So it might be an apprenticeship that really um, you know, allows businesses to develop their own talent and allows apprentices to actually start delivering value back into that business right away. Um, those tend to be really mutually beneficial programs because most of us learn by doing. So it's great for the apprentice, great for the business. Um, and I think learning that is delivered flexibly. So it flexes around your work commitments, it flexes around your family commitments. Um, and the size of it actually relates to, you know, the size of the skills gaps that you're trying to address. All of those things are really, really important because um, if we're going to maximise uptake and engagement, it's got to work and, it, and it's got to fit around all of the other things that, that busy working adults are juggling. And just, just kind of pick up on that point, you know, I think that de develop your own message is clearly, you know, an important one. But you know, if I cast my mind back to sort of 18 months ago, in in what I fondly term as the olden days, uh, when we were allowed to meet in places and have you know conferences in conference halls, um, uh, you know, in the olden days, just 18 months ago, there, there was always a, already a really you know there was already a, a challenge in recruiting digital skills into into organisations, and lots of employers um, who I spoke to were, were really struggling to kind of fill their digital roles. You know, we know that, you know, since the pandemic, there's this huge acceleration of digital adoption. Surely, surely the problem is just, you know, a, a difficult problem has just got a whole lot harder. Yeah, I, think I, so. I would agree with you. Yeah, I, oh, sorry, I, I Jane, totally agree. No, go, no, no, go Jane, ahead. Jane, you, Jane, you go first and then I'll come to Phil. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it has. And, and I think that's where, um, you know, we need to do even more to, to impact on that. And I think, um, you know, the digital skills debate has now perhaps, you know, transcended past, you know, the fact that we have this problem and, and the size of the gap and, you know, the nature of the gap and perhaps more moving towards, well, what can we do collaboratively to impact on it? And I think that's where now, you know, we're moving to. But I think, um, you know, perhaps to Matt's point earlier, he was talking about Excel, wasn't he? And he was talking about, you know, I, I remember a statistic that perhaps 
you know, all of us probably only use a tiny, tiny percentage of that piece of software's capability. It's just that we all use a slightly different percentage. And, you know, there's no way that all of us can, can know any, everything. And I think it's about um, just creating um, the opportunity for more and more people to build foundational skills and then to be able to, you know, upskill very regularly and just be really open to that and really confident with that. And I think that that actually would just kind of, again, kind of sit at the foundation of trying to impact on the skills gap, apart from, you know, there being an increasing number of different programs that, that suit different people's needs and suit different businesses' needs. But um, yeah, over to you, Phil. Yeah, I mean, I, you said it very, very eloquently, Jane. I think the 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 issue is that we don't really have a culture, and you mentioned this earlier, of continuous learning. I mean, it always shocks me when I see the number of businesses who do zero training at all. I don't mean digital; I just mean like any training. And you know, if you've got a workforce that you that are going to have to adapt, whether it just be to a different customer environment or a different economic environment, and you don't do any training, then continually people are slipping backwards. So I think we somehow need to make things more accessible. And in our private lives, people are much more used to, you know, click or looking at YouTube or searching on Google or whatever, you know, on their mobile phones. Somehow we need to make um, development, uh, the skills development feel like that, which is, you know, contact relevant at the time you need it in bite-sized chunks in a presentable, accessible way with maybe some recognition that you're growing as part of doing that. And then this culture that Matt talked about of kind of, you know, open this noble aim or whatever. And I think if we can start to do that, then the actual training we provide, as you said, there is tons of it around. But getting it to the point where it's just the right thing at the right time for the right business is really what we need to do. And that is, again, I guess to a degree, it's a, it's a leadership issue. It's an issue of how you encourage people to feel that that's a good thing to do because we have to do this. I think the statistic we've quoted widely is that, you know, 80% plus of the workforce of 2030 are in the workforce already. So there's not some magical bunch of new people going to appear and suddenly fix all this. The people you've got today broadly, and maybe some you'll bring in, are the people for the next 10 years. So it's it's to you as a business leader to think about how you get the right skills to make your business successful. Dead easy to say, really hard to do. So a lot of it's about, can we encourage that kind of thinking? And can we provide a supply that's kind of easy to use, digestible, there when you need it, et cetera. So important. Great. Thank, thank you for that, Phil. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid we're out of time. It's 45 minutes yeah. up in, in, in no time at all. As, as my computer just told me, we're out of time. But, I, <laughs> but you know, just to reflect, you know, I think we've covered a lot of ground here. You know, I think, Phil, you know, you, you kind of captured the essence of, of the challenge. Very easy to say, difficult to do. There is a role to, to help and support small businesses make the changes they need and re re really kind of drive their digital capability and drive the increased use of technology. I just want to finish the session by uh, thanking uh, our panelists and speakers, uh, Phil Smith and Jane Dickinson. Thank you so much. And thank you every, everybody for joining this com uh, conversation live and also to the thousands of people that will be listening to this on playback. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.